Hi all, welcome to the video lecture series of object oriented programming. In this video lecture, we'll be covering some of the topics that comes under or that can be considered as an overview of Java programming language. So when we talk about Java programming language, we often hear all these terms, what is like programming environment, runtime environment, development platforms, Java virtual machine, bytecode, all these terms are related to each other or all these terms when we uh, when we search for when we search for Java programming all these terms may appear in the net. So we'll just go through what are the meaning of these terms one by one. So we'll start with Java programming environment. So what do we mean by this Java programming environment? We know that Java is a programming language and when we talk about Java programming environment it consists of three parts. One is our programming language Java then an application program interface specification and a virtual machine specification. So when we combine all these three, then we can say that that is known as Java programming. Now what is Java runtime environment? Java runtime environment is the portion that provides the implementation of JVM and JVM stands for Java virtual machine. We can see this picture. So this portion is known as JVM and along with JVM if we have the class loader and all the Java class libraries we can say that that is known as JRE. So Java runtime environment means it's a combination of both JVM that is Java virtual machine and all the tools that are required to implement a standard Java application. So that is known as JRE. So JRE includes both the class loader and the bytecode verifier. We will see what is class loader and what do we mean by this class libraries. Class libraries are similar to our library files or header files in C programming. We often write hash include stdio.h and we know that all files with extension .h are known as header files. Those files are also known as library files. In Java also there are so many files like that. Those are known as Java class libraries. These are already built in available or a built in programs available in Java that helps us to do programs. And this is known as JVM Java virtual machine. So Java virtual machine consists of an interpreter, a garbage collector and threads and synchronization part. Okay. So JVM plus this class loader and byte bytecode verifier plus its class libraries. It's known as Java runtime environment. Now what is this Java development platforms? There are four platforms for our Java programming language and they are named as standard edition, enterprise edition, micro edition and Java FX out of which we'll be discussing only about standard edition and enterprise edition. Java standard edition that's a basic uh, that's a basic Java programming language. It includes all the necessary tools that is required or that are required to develop Java programs for networking security, database access and graphical user interface for everything. There will be tools for developing all these things in Java Standard Edition. Next is Enterprise Edition. Enterprise editions are developed or built on top of Standard Edition. So Enterprise Edition can be considered as a specialization of Standard Edition and is mainly used for developing network applications. Now comes the Java compiler and bytecode. This portion is very important because this is what we will be dealing with throughout our Java programming language course because we will have to write programs, we will have to commonly use the Java compiler. 
so we must have a thorough understanding about the compiler and the bytecode and the relation between them so please uh, study these topics carefully and properly so we all know that Java is a programming language similar to or like C programming language so all of you have done some programming in C all of you know how to how to write a C program how to save it the first thing that we do we will be writing a program whatever may be the programming language even if it is Java or C the first thing that we have to do is to write a job or write a program I'm not saying that write Java program irrespective of the programming language the first thing that we have to do is to write a program and when we saved the C programming the extension was .c I hope all of you remember that the file name .c C was the extension similarly when we save a program in Java we have to save it with .java extension okay we have to save the file in which we have written the Java program with .java as the extension so what's the next step after writing the program yes that is compilation in the case of C programming also after you write or after you wrote the C program the next step was the compilation you opened the terminal and you typed isn't it gcc space file name dot c that is the step at which we are calling the c compiler similarly in java also after writing the java program we have to call the compiler and what's the purpose of compilation the compiler is the program or software that converts the program written by us into the machine language that is understandable by the machines or the computers that is why we are performing this compilation after writing the program but in case of Java when we compile the Java program written by ourselves the compiler will be converting the program into something known as the bytecode so that is the definition of bytecode so bytecode means it is the output file that we get after Java compilation or the output that the Java compiler gives is known as the bytecode okay and speciality of this bytecode is it is neither a high level language nor a machine language that means the bytecode that we get after the compilation of Java source program that is the program written by ourselves the file that we saved with the dot Java extension okay we'll get something known as the bytecode this bytecode cannot be we cannot read the bytecode at the same time our computer also is not able to read the bytecode so who can read that that is the question there comes the importance of JVM so bytecode is a piece of code that can be read only by one machine and that machine is known as Java virtual machine nobody else in this world can read that bytecode so first we write the Java program save it with dot Java extension calls the Java compiler compiler converts the program written in uh, source, the source programming language that is Java into something known as bytecode bytecode is neither high level programming language high level means the programming language that the human beings can understand that is known as high level language so bytecode is neither high level nor machine level it is in between high level and machine code and this byte code can be read only by one machine and that machine is known as Java virtual machine that means without Java virtual machine the byte code cannot be executed that means we will not get the output of our program so Java virtual machine is very much important okay so I hope you understood all these three steps okay so bytecode generated is run by Java virtual machine okay nobody else can do that and it is a responsibility or duty of Java virtual machine to allocate the resources required what is the meaning of resources for anything that we have to do with computer that needs some memory space it has to be invoked by the process processor then only the program will execute 
so program has to be loaded into the computer memory and the processor have to take and execute the instructions then only that program will be executed so all these are the responsibility of java virtual machine you can see in this figure the first thing is our source code that is the program that we write and we'll be saving that with dot java extension so see this we are saving the file as dot java file and then we will call the compiler the compiler will convert this dot java file into something known as a bytecode and see the extension of this bytecode the extension of bytecode is dot class i hope all of you understood what's the meaning of extension all files will have an extension like if we talk about where document the extension will be dot doc or dot docx for powerpoint it will be dot ppt or dot pptx for excel file it will be dot xlx or dot excel similarly for c programming file the extension will be dot c similarly for java program file it will be dot java and the byte code that we get after java compilation will have an extension known as dot class so or all, all byte codes will be having the extension as dot class and see where the jvm is located jvm is located in between or above the os that means this byte code can be executed only by jvm and see the output of jvm that is the machine code so this byte code that is generated can be read or can be converted into machine code only by jvm so if jvm is not there we will not get the corresponding machine code that means the computers will not be able to understand what to do or will not be able to understand the lines of code that we have written inside the source code so it is this jvm that converts this byte code into the machine code so byte code is not the machine code the computers can understand only the machine code so it, to convert this byte code into machine code we need jvm and jvm is platform independent sorry jvm is platform dependent for windows there will be one jvm for linux there will be another jvm for mac will be there will be another jvm but this byte code we will say that our java program is said to be platform independent because of this jvm so if we have the jvm installed in our system we can run any java program written by anybody else that is why we are saying that java is platform independent I hope you understood this picture. This picture. Now coming or talking about Java Virtual Machine. It is very often it is uh, written as JVM. So whenever you see JVM, you must think of this full name. That is Java Virtual Machine. So it's actually a machine that does not exist. That's a weird meaning of virtual. I hope you know the meaning of virtual. Virtual reality, something that does not exist. Similarly, virtual machine means the machine that does not exist actually in physical. Okay. So we know that Java programs are written using the source code, are written uh, in Java language. Java language is what we are going to learn. So it is a human readable language. We can understand each and every word written inside Java programming language. Okay, and it is based on class and object oriented. So we all understand. We will be able to understand what we are writing in Java program. But that is not the case with the computers. The computers cannot understand not in a single word that we are going to write in our program. So it is the JVM that converts or that makes it possible to uh, for the computers to understand. So JVM is a program that provides the runtime environment necessary for java programs to execute so once we write the java program we need to execute it so for that what all things are required that is provided by this jvm okay and this last point is very important that you have to keep in mind that is we cannot run any java program without a jvm if jvm is not installed or if jvm is not available in our system then we cannot run the Java program because it is a J as we uh, please uh, go back and see that picture it is a JVM that converts the bytecode into the machine code so without JVM 
the computers won't be able to understand the lines of code that we have written inside the program. So JVM is a compulsory or compulsory uh, software that we have to install. Can see this. So all the class file that means the bytecode. From the previous picture, it is clear that class files are the bytecode, and the class files are given to the JVM. The JVM converts this class file into the machine code so that each of the operating system will be able to understand the lines of code in written inside the source program, and the operating system will do exactly what is mentioned inside it. Okay, and this point is also important. JVM is platform independent. Sorry, dependent. Java program is platform independent. Once again, our Java virtual machine is actually platform dependent. We cannot use the JVM of Mac for Windows. We cannot use the JVM for Windows in Linux. So JVM is platform dependent, and because of this JVM, our Java programs are said to be platform independent. Okay. So this is the picture of our JVM. This is what it looks like. It will include a class loader. Class loader is something that loads the class file. Then it will have the JVM will all allocate the memory area. For class there will be one memory space. For heap, for stack, everything there will be memory. There will be execution engine which executes the program. Then there will be method interfaces. So all together these are this is known as the Java virtual machine. These are the components of Java virtual machine. So we shall conclude now. So we discussed about Java programming platforms. We saw what is Java program standard edition. Then we also discussed about enterprise edition. Then we clearly mentioned what is bytecode, what is Java virtual machine, what is Java compilation, why Java is said to be platform independent, why Java Java virtual machine is said to be platform dependent. Or who converts uh, this JVM or this bytecode into machine code? So bytecode is actually between the machine code and the high-level language. That is a program we have written in our own language. So JVM is actually an interpreter. Java virtual machine is actually an interpreter. I hope you know the difference between a compiler and interpreter. Compilers converts the entire program as a whole into machine code. But the interpreter converts the entire program line by line into the machine code. So, once again, I will repeat. The first thing that we have to do is to write our Java program, save the program in with dot Java extension, then call the Java compiler. Java compiler will convert our Java program into bytecode. Bytecode will be having an extension dot class. It is the responsibility of Java virtual machine to read this bytecode. So the bytecode is the input that we give to the Java virtual machine. And just now I mentioned that Java virtual machine is an interpreter. So Java virtual machine will read the lines inside the bytecode line by line. That means one line at a time and converts that into machine code. Once it is converted to machine code, our processor, it may be Windows, Linux or Mac, reads the instructions inside the machine code and execute as it is mentioned inside it and thus we will get the output. This is the overall procedure that takes place when we run a Java program. Okay, in the next video lecture we will see the basic structure of a Java program. How to write a Java program, that is what we are going to see in the next video lecture. Please go through this video several times so that you are clear with the concept of Java bytecode, Java compiler, Java source program, Java virtual machine. Thank you so much.